Hi friends, welcome to your very first episode of Solar Vision. I'm Ashley Dukes and I will be your host. Isn't that exciting? Yay! So Solar Vision is the safe channel to your soul. You get it? Soul television, solar vision. Yeah. Please stay. <laughs> But um, I just wanted to introduce Solar Vision a little bit, the thought behind it. So here we go. I am a very, very deep thinker. I always think very deeply to the point where it's kind of annoying for me because nobody wants to be thinking deep all the time. Some things should just be shallow. Some things should be shallow. And that's something that I learned over the years. But I have been through a lot of my life that has caused me to be a deep thinker and an overly empathetic person and all those things in my life caused me to be wise so though those things were terrible I know that they allowed me to have this gift and this gift is what this show will be and it's helping people that were either in a situation like mine or someone that just I feel like I speak to people's souls at times. So the words that come through my mouth sometimes speak to people. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm very nervous. This is my first time ever speaking in front of the camera for a long time. So bear with me. Okay. Now I was put on this earth to use what my story gave me to help you heal. You get it? It's like a channel. Like we're working together. I'm here for you. Um, but some of this is for me to like either reminders or things that got me through certain things. I just want to help people. You know, that's that's it. It sounds corny, but that's really it. I am a deep person, but I also enjoy laughing and comedy and things of that nature. So we'll be like deep a little bit. We'll be like a little silly, a little funny, because it wouldn't be me if I wasn't a little silly or a little funny. OK, I just want to say I'm proud of myself because I did this whole backdrop by myself. All the art, mwah, every single piece here I did. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. I think that's amazing. Um, there's little affirmations, happiness over everything, make them feel good, which is what I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to do. Um, God, I trust you. How we were raised will not define us. Love yourself. Plant in a frame. <laughs> um, chasing happiness and purpose. My soul is healing. Soul of vision. I attract limitless abundance. Old souls have been traumatized. What's for me will find me. I created this beautiful artwork and this beautiful artwork and this artwork off camera which i'm just gonna show it because why not but i'm not trying to be an artist i just want i like doing things on my own anywho let's start off with some affirmations because i think affirmations i don't know i just thought of it we'll see if it stays around and with these affirmations i want you to say them with me so that we can be affirmed you ready? I am growing. I am evolving. I am my own goals. I have all the time in the world to do whatever I need to get done. Everything works out perfectly for me. I trust God. I am motivated. I am significant. I am important. I am enough. Let's add in I am more than enough. I'm attracting the things that I want. I am grateful for the opportunities that will come today. Everything that I want is already on its way. I am successful. Wow. I surprised myself. I didn't, obviously you've heard those affirmations before, but like I wrote those down just randomly. I have a whole thing of affirmations. Um, so I guess we'll do that every episode. Let me know how you, how you think. All right. So I think we should just dive into the deepness for a little bit. So the deep segment this deep segment rolling in the deep I guess we can call it is our thoughts that just come to my head and I just write down basically I don't know it's part of the gift I'm not sure but I feel like I want to share them so here I am so the first thing is to give yourself grace you're doing the best you can now for whatever reason in today's society it's like young people feel pressure to be successful already and like you just graduated high school you just graduated from college you, you're still young you're still in the the phase of growing and figuring out what you want to do you don't need to know exactly what you want to do right now and it's fine if you don't give yourself grace you are new to all of this you just became an adult it's just like you have a baby and you expect that baby to start walking out the womb 
womb oh my gosh come on it's just like if you had a baby and you expect that baby to start walking straight out the womb it's impossible the baby doesn't know how give the baby time the baby will do give yourself time you will do please don't stress yourself out because what's the point you're just going to be stressed in the same situation you were in before we don't want that just take time enjoy the process i know it can be ghetto I know it can be trifling. I know you see other people doing things that you want to do. But guess what? That's their time. It's not yours. So give yourself grace. Congratulate yourself. Pat yourself, pat yourself on the back for all that you have done, all the steps you have made, and how far you have come. Because I know if you look back, you can tell you came a very, 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 very long way. I know if I look back just a year, I came a very long way. And... I think a lot of people forget about that. A lot of people forget that you're not supposed to have everything together. You're not supposed to be a multimillionaire by 25. It's impossible. And that's that's not right to put that stress on you. You are too young to be so stressed out. Please, please, please take your time with yourself. Be very patient. You are trying. As long as you're trying, be patient. When you see a kid trying to do something, you're like, oh, they are determined. They are determined. Because they know they'll get it. As long as you know you'll get it eventually, just just slow down. Just slow down. Pat yourself on the back for doing the best that you can with what you have. Don't be looking at nobody else because you don't know what they have. You don't know you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but you know what you got. So do the best with what you got. And you have all the excuses to not do, but I'm proud of you for doing, and that's the main part. Whew. And then that ties into se- to the second thing. Run your own race and at your own pace. You cannot expect to be at this level, right, in the race when you just started it. You just started the race. So this is the finish line. You just started the race. How are you going to jump from there, from here to there? It's impossible. It's impossible. Sometimes you just have to sit down and be realistic with your expectations and where you are. Not saying that you can't still have the goals to get up there, but you cannot expect to just jump there. Just run the race. However you run, you're going to have obstacles. You're going to have little bumps in the roads. It's all right. It's going to happen. Sometimes you might have to pivot. Sometimes you might have to slow down. Sometimes you speed up. It just, every race is different. Everyone has different things that they have to go through in order to get to where they need to go. You have to go through different things that build your character, build up who you are in order to get to where you need to go. In the time, it might seem like a negative or bad things are happening to you. But when you look back, once you get to where you need to go and once you get past certain milestones, you realize I needed this to teach me this. I needed that to teach me this. I needed that to teach me this. And you take all those things that were terrible and the things that those terrible things taught you and you bring them into your, I guess, higher level, depending on wherever you are, because this is, I don't know where you are um, in your life, but you take all those lessons and bring them with you as you elevate and you realize like... I wouldn't have been as successful as this if I didn't have these things at the bottom. So enjoy the bottom. And the easiest way to get through it is to tell yourself that these are the lessons, what lessons I need to learn and remind yourself that these lessons are necessary for you to move on. Because if you do not learn the lesson, those things are going to repeat. So if you ever have seen in your life where things are happening over and over and over, same old, same old, same old, is because you're not learning the lesson. And you cannot go forward until you learn the lesson. And I don't know who needs to hear that, but that goes for everything. Relationships, work, friendships, all, every spectrum. If it keeps happening over and over, there's something you need to learn. So be patient. Pat yourself on the back for where you're going. Pat yourself on the back for being grateful for where you are. 
just pat yourself on the back. Any little thing you do, please celebrate it. We're not being humble no more. Because if you look up the definition of humble, that's minimizing. We don't do that. You are doing an amazing job. I just almost ate the mic. You are doing an amazing job at what you're doing. And if no one told you, I'm proud of you. Because I know the process, the process, the process, the process, the process is ghetto. I'm going through the process with you. Ghetto. The next episode, we'll talk about why I quit my business. And um, that'll be fun. (laughs) But just find reasons to smile in the process, even though it's not... You don't have any reasons to smile. Please find a reason to smile. Please, 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 please do me a favor. Once you look at things from a different perspective in life, you really and truly understand like this is not that bad. Like things are bad, but it's like they're for a reason. Like once you understand it's for a reason, then you start to be grateful for the things that you have. And then you realize like, wow, I have so much. Like, yeah, I don't have what I want right now, but like. You have everything you need right now. You're able to, you're still able to survive with what you have right now. Because if you weren't, then you wouldn't be here. So you're still surviving. So shout out to you for surviving. And I feel like there's a lot of people these days that feel like they don't have anyone to turn to. They feel like no one's supporting them. They feel like they just are alone in this world. And I want you to just hold on tight to yourself. Stop seeking or stop looking for those people to validate you. Do it for yourself. Now, sounds hard, I know. But once you do it for yourself, you'll see that people just appear in your life. I promise. Like, stop looking for those people to support you. Stop being angry and upset with those people. They have their own stuff going on. They probably have stuff they're trying to heal from or stuff they haven't healed from. Let's say that. Stuff they haven't healed from. And they're just projecting on you. And that's not your fault. So stop begging for their attention. Stop begging for them to support you because they probably never will. And you're just going to be upset. So forget about them. Do your thing. And then I promise you people, I don't know, you just attract the people that are for you when you least expect it, though. Once, Once you stop looking for people to support you, that's when you find the people that support you. And I know strangers support you before family does. And I'm going on a tangent. So next um, segment is our fun facts. All right. So I'm going to share three fun facts. And let me know if they're fun (laughs) in the comments. Fun fact number one. Did you know that sunsets on Mars are blue? I did not know that. And I probably should have did some research. But let's do some research. Our son, I found all of these on Reddit, by the way. So some of them have sources, some of them don't. But let's see. Sunsets in Mars blue. Yeah, on Mars, the red planet. The daytime sky looks red and sunsets are blue. The opposite of what we see on our own planet. Hmm interesting oh oh i don't know that's a fun fact but like when will i be using that fact i don't know all right fun fact number two did you know sliced bread was oops fun fact number two did you know sliced bread was first manufactured in 1920s that didn't seem long from now. It's not long from now. What was that? A hundred years? Yeah, we're over a hundred years. A hundred and two years. Sliced bread was first manufactured by machine and sold in the 1920s by the Chilla Chile Cough Baking Company in Missouri. It was the greatest thing since unsliced bread. <laughs> That's from a source. Chillico, Chillico, Chillicothnews.com. And did you know the first toothbrush was made out of pig hair? Now that is disgusting. 
That has to be the most disgusting fun fact. What was it again? We got to look all these up right here, right now. Did you know the first toothbrush was made out of pig hair? My Google search is going to look crazy. Was the first toothbrush made out of pig hair? Her. Yes. Wow. Bamboo. Okay, this dates back to Chinese 13th century. Bamboo or animal bone was used as the handle of the toothbrush and pig hair formed the bristles. Are you insane? No offense to the Chinese culture. But that is crazy. Pig hair. Where did the hair come from? Where do pigs have hair? In their ears? In their tails? In their butts? Wow. Stop peeking in here. Okay, where did they get... Where did they get hair off the pig for two brushes. Now this information I'm scared to know. Oh, they don't have that information. Oh. Let me look at a pig. Wild pig. Let's see where they have hair at. Oh, they have fur. They're furry. Pigs are furry. Why do they show? Pink pigs. Why do they show regular pigs as pink? Oh, okay. So you have wild boars and then you have pink, the pink pigs. The pink pigs are called the American land landrus pig. Okay. So they have to get it from the wild pig because the wild pigs have hair. Interesting. Okay. Those are our fun facts for today. <laughs> um, all right. Were those facts fun? Let me know. Let me know. Actually, let's do some more fun facts. I feel like we should do some more. Where are the rest of them? All right. This one's funny. Did you know America's first bank robber deposited the money back into the same bank? How do you rob a bank and put the money right back? How? Why? What brain? All right. At the Bank of Philadelphia on August 1st, 1798, a sum of $162,821 was stolen from the vault. There was no sign of forced entry, so it was thought to be an inside job. Patrick Lyon was imprisoned as a prime suspect as he had been the carpenter that worked on the vault doors. But then they realized a man named Isaac Davis had been large, depositing large amounts of money into the Bank of Philadelphia. It turned out that he <laughs> was one of the robbers involved. In 1799, Lyon was freed and Davis only ended up repaying the money without serving a day in jail. Okay. There's a lot about this fun fact that is troubling or puzzling, baffling. I'm perplexed. No, baffling to me is the fact that one this fool decided to put deposit the money back into the account if anything just use cash not saying that you should do crime and steal money if anything you pay cash second why he didn't do no jail time he stole money $162,821 was stolen but i guess they said if he was 
paying it back technically by depositing it back into his account. He was paying the bank back. They thought it was okay, which I don't agree with, right? We don't agree with that, right? 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 But, yeah, that's funny. That's very funny. All right, one more fun fact. Did you know crows hold grudges? Crows. I mean, crows do look kind of evil. They're scary. So I wouldn't put it past them to hold a grudge. I wouldn't put it past them. So are they holding grudges against humans, other crows, or all animals or beings? Obviously not insects. Why would I think insects? Okay, in 2020, 2020, oh my gosh. In 2010, researchers in Seattle found that formerly captured crows were able to remember the face of their abductor even years after the incident. incident. In 2020, <laughs> in 2010, Researchers in Seattle found that formerly captured crows were able to remember the face of their abductor even years after the incident. Once they identified the suspect in question, they would threaten them by diving down and swarming the person that they had felt threatened by years before. Hmm. So they have good memory to even hold a grudge. That's impressive. But birds are... Didn't we already know birds had great memory? Because didn't they use birds in jails to bring drugs into jails? Like they trained birds to remember the route from wherever the drug dealer was to the jail so that the bird can bring drugs into the jail. Am I the only one I heard that story? I'm not tripping, right? I can't be. So that's impressive, but I think we already knew we already knew that information about birds. Birds are smart. They have, I don't know what size their brains are, but. Okay. Now. We'll do shower thoughts. Now, shower thoughts is basically exactly what it is. Shower thoughts. And I, once again, found these on Reddit. And I think they're, they cause you to think. And we're thinking on this podcast, all right? Right. All right. We're going to do like four shower thoughts. All right, let's go. It's odd that everyone is different, yet we spend most of our lives trying to fit in and be like one another rather than embracing our weirdness. Very true. Most of us for a long time tried to fit in until we realized like, dang, we really don't fit in. And people make sure you feel like you don't fit in. So you're kind of forced to embrace your weirdness. But I wish we were taught that our weirdness was cool. Like, be yourself. It's cool to be different. That's true. It's odd. It's I think it's human nature, though, for kids to want to be like the other kids so that you can be included in the posse or whatever you want to call it. The posse. <laughs> okay. Number two. It's actu- it actually is smarter to not look back at explosions like in the movies. Very true. Because why would you? You should be running instead of actually walking like how they do in the movies. But I get it. For movie purposes, it's to have dramatic effect. Whatever. Three, being proven wrong makes you smarter. I agree. I agree. Because when you're proven wrong, they the person that you're interacting with teaches you why you were wrong therefore you learn a lesson and you learn that thing to bring on to whatever else you do for the rest of your life uh number four you never really see a movie or a tv character sneeze unless it was for the plot very true 
But why are you thinking that? Who thinks of that? <laughs> Who thinks, like, I've never seen anyone sneeze before? That's something I would think. I'm not going to lie. If only I had all of my shower thoughts written down, that would be nice. But I don't. Anywho. Um, but yeah. You probably only see the character sneezing if obviously they're sick. And that's that's about it. They won't be sneezing any other reason. They're, they're, they wouldn't be sneezing any other reason. Am I a rapper? They wouldn't be sneezing for any other reason. Hmm. Is it weird that y'all see, like, when you see shows nowadays that since COVID, like, they have to wear masks and stuff? That's crazy, right? It made it so real for me. I was watching This Is Us. I don't know why. It's just like, oh, y'all are wearing masks. But y'all are not supposed to be real. Because I guess in the TV shows, they're not real. They're real people, but they're not real people. So when I see them wearing masks, it's like, oh, we're living kind of like the same lives. Like, it makes them more real than real. More real than fake real. Like, more real than TV real. I don't know. Last one. If you throw a shell into the ocean, you might be the last human to touch that shell. Very true. But you also might not be. There might be other humans to touch that shell, right? No, I'm playing, but it's probably because that the sea is so vast. So vast. I wonder how many shells are at the bottom of the sea. That's the question. But we've never been that far down to even know. Because the shells have to go somewhere, right? Or do they float and come back? What do you think? See, now we're getting into other theories. Now we're getting into other theories. All right. So. Next. We'll go into... what I learned this week and this is lots of fun these are lessons that I learned this week this might not be a weekly thing because I don't be learning too too much every week let me not say that I do learn things every week but I'm I don't want to put the pressure of this being every week thing so I'm just letting you know that it might not be every week thing that's it all right so I have four things because this is the first episode and it's probably not just from this week but like this month or so um by the way happy mental health awareness month i'm not sure if this is going to be coming out in may but it's filmed in may so that counts um but number one your happiness and success is up to you it's always up to you um obviously there's other sources and things around you that can cause you to not be successful or you know there's just unfortunate and unfair things that happen to everyone but how you react is up to you how you overcome is up to you how you get through is up to you you make the choice to you make the choice in how you overcome things it's all you and once you realize that you are probably either in your way you get better because you notice it's you you make the choice to either mope around all day or you make the choice to like say hey i'm feeling this way i'm gonna feel this way for a little bit but i gotta get up and keep going it's all a choice and it's all up to you same with happiness bad things happen all the time it's up to you to choose to see the good in in even the worst things it's up to you to choose to see the good in the worst things. Because there's always something good. There's always something good you can find. And even if there isn't nothing good, you can still find a reason to be happy. Because you're alive. You have people that love you. You have clean water. You, you have running water. Whatever your situation is, even if you don't have running water, there's still something. You're always alive each day. Number two, 
If you change your mindset, you change your life. Very true. You start looking at things as a chance versus a chore. Ooh, that was good. That was good. If you start looking at things as a chance instead of a chore, then you're able to get through and do all the things that you want to do. Because you have a diff- you're coming at it, you're coming at it with a different mindset. You're coming at it as like I get to do this. I like doing this. I want to do this. All right, the camera cut off, but we're back. Hey, as you can see, the camera died. But what I was trying to say is, if you look at it as oh, I get to do this versus, oh, I got to do this. You realize that you start dreading it. And that's not cool because you will also see that you will start to hate it. It's just a process. It's like steps before you realize that you hate it. What I did learn is that sometimes even when you change your mindset, the reason why you don't feel better about a situation may be because it wasn't for you to begin with. Whoa. Um, yeah. So I said, you change your mindset, you change your life. And that's really true. Like... You change the way you think about things. The things that once were challenging become second nature. Like you all of a sudden have the ability and the mindset to be able to complete all the things that you want to complete when you look at it as a chance and an opportunity versus a chore. Period. Um, I learned to take myself seriously. Like I know that I'm good at things. I know that I can do things. I know that once I have my mind to something, I can do it. But I have a hard time believing that I'm as great as I am. So I don't want to sound big headed, but I know that I'm great, but I don't believe it. I know I can do these things, but I don't believe it. I can have physical proof in front of me from someone else saying, this is amazing. You're amazing. You're doing a great job. And it's like, "Ah, am I though? Am I? So... Once I was put in a situation where an avenue that I thought would be my avenue for the rest of my life became not the avenue that was going to be here for the rest of my life. So I learned to believe in myself to even do this. Like all of this, all of this lights, camera, actions, all of it. So it's just proven to myself that I can do it, take myself seriously. I need to be determined to myself as I would my nine to five that I used to have or seven to seven. I used to work 12s, but it's just like, you know, you got to go to work at seven. You get up at six, you get ready, you get your lunch ready and you don't be late for seven. But if you're like me and you're working for yourself, it's like, you got to take yourself seriously. If you say you're going to do this at this time by this date, do it just like you would do for someone else. Because for whatever reason, when it's for us, it's like we lack the discipline. And I lack the discipline and I lack the belief. Like, I can do these things. Because it's like, who wants to hear from me? That's what I was thinking. Who wants to hear from me? Like, what do I have to give? Like, girl, if you don't realize, like, you were given these gifts. So, start believing in yourself. Or that, well, that's what I learned. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did I just mix two? I just mixed two. Take yourself seriously and to believe in yourself. I just put them together. I really did. Wow. Take yourself seriously as serious as you take other people, basically. You have a boss, you take them seriously because you know if you don't, you lose your job. Do the same for yourself. Have discipline, set, set time parameters to do certain things and get them done in that time. Show yourself that you're serious about you. And from there, everything else just trickles on down. And then to believe in yourself, obviously. You were given these abilities. You were given these abilities for a reason. Not just a season. So believe that you were given them and apply those gifts to what you need to apply them to. You know exactly what you need to apply them to. Just apply those gifts and believe in yourself because if it was put on your brain, if it's in your heart, you're you're able to do it. You just have to believe that you can. And once you believe, then you just do. All right. So the last segment is this week's challenge, right? So this segment is for us. We're doing this together to challenge ourselves this week. 
So something that you struggle with, something you know that you struggle with and you want to be better at or do better at, we're going to challenge ourselves in ways that allow us to be better with whatever thing. Example, my challenge is that I want to purposely put myself in uncomfortable situations that will allow me to stop thinking about what other people think about me. Further, i.e., would be if, well, you probably don't know. I'm a skater. I skate, and I think that I'm a really good skater. However, comma, I don't do things at the rink that I would do at home because I'm scared or I'm thinking, I'm always constantly thinking about what someone else is going to think of me. Like, oh, she's trying too hard. Oh, she's doing too much. Oh, she didn't do that right. She didn't do that right. Oh, why is she doing all that? She don't know what she's doing, basically, right? And it's just not in skating. It's in most of my life, I always thought that. I always thought about what people would think about me. Worst critic of myself times 22, right? And I was able to skate by, but I think with skating, it's the there's different challenges because you're at different rinks. You're actually dancing. Like I didn't really dance unless it was a little twerky twerk back in, you know, high school, college. But like to have all the attention on me, I'm not the person to have attention on me. But for whatever reason, when I skate, the I feel people watching me and that's just what it is. So my challenge is I have a friend, my dearest friend. She takes me all over the place. Well, takes me, convinces me to go all over the place with her to different environments and I'm slowly breaking out of that shell of like, don't look at me, don't look at me. I don't want to, I don't want people to look at me and I do things to not draw attention to myself. Basically is what I do. So now what I like to do, and I like these challenges for myself because it's forcing me to be the me that I want to be. So that's what these challenges should be. Whatever you want to be, if you want to be a certain way, if you want to do things a certain way, then you challenge yourself in ways to achieve that goal. Hi. Um, so yeah, I purposefully do things that make me very, very uncomfortable so I can over- overcome those fears. Like another example, back a couple months ago, I was the type to have people do me wrong and for me to just blow it under, like blow it over, whatever, like it's whatever because I don't really care. Well, that's what I thought. But it's just like, no, you need to speak up for yourself and let these people know that this is where they had you messed up. Now, not in a way of like, I'm trying to fight them, but like, (sighs) let me go back a little bit. I'm the type, or I was the type, let's put that. I was the type to have people do me wrong, minor instances and major instances, and I wouldn't say anything for a period of time and it would just build up and then it's like oh now I want to throw all these things at you but that's not cool because this whole time they didn't know because I didn't tell them so now my challenge was when people started doing me wrong and that's that period of time which those were tests because I I had to learn those things I had to because it kept going over and over and over and over so I was like okay this is my test all right I accept this challenge. I'm going to do it. Two people, different things that they were doing. But as soon as the hardest part was confronting them and telling them what they did and how I didn't like it and how it affected me. Um, But once I got over that, it was like, oh, they realized like, okay, let me start acting regular now. Like that's kind of like setting your boundaries with people like, hey, do not try me like that. This is I don't like this. I don't like how you did me like that. That's not cool, like, no. But yeah, do not treat me like that. I don't like that. And all in all, it's just like, how will they know if you don't tell them? So my challenge was just to tell people exactly what's on my brain, kind of, because I just never like confrontation. I've never spoke up for myself. We'll get into the reasons why later, because those are deeper meanings and they have deeper origins. But it's like, I challenge myself to be so uncomfortable stepping up to people. And now it's just like, I can do it now. So now I can speak up for myself because I've been at a time where it's like, 
I never spoke up for myself. And then it was like, that's it. I will speak up for myself from now on. I will never be put in that situation. So very extended example on um, this week's challenge. So this week's challenge is continuing to put myself in those uncomfortable situations, i.e. for this specific example, skating and dancing and having fun without putting thought into it because I overthink every single thing. So if we're at a party and this, this movement right here, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about like, okay, don't move your head too much because if you move your head too much, then you're going to look like you're trying too hard, right? All right? Don't be looking around at people. Look like over people like things like that I overthink so much so basically it is putting myself in an uncomfortable situation but it's also force like me forcing myself to stop thinking and overthinking about things there's so many tears to this but yeah that's my week's challenge comment in the comments your challenges comment what you think about this podcast let me know let me know let me know, let me know, let me know. I really want to know um and that is it for today. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you watch to the end, I'll love. Um, but that has been our first ever episode, oh my gosh, of Solavision. And I am just so proud of myself. Pat on my back. There was something I wanted to add about enjoying the process and believing in yourself something along the lines of me like if this is the process I think I did say that I hope I did if I didn't I guess that'll be a voiceover but that's not cool so let me just say it again enjoy the process and believe in yourself because there was a time where I thought that my end goal I was in the career path for my end goal and that all changed and I had to pivot and here I am in a whole nother process you're in the process with me. So we are enjoying the process together. Isn't that beautiful? I think that's beautiful. So let's enjoy this process together. Well, that is all for Soul Division. Um, you can catch me on Instagram at Ashley XO Simone. And the Soul Division page should be up by then. We're going to see. Um, maybe, yeah, it should be. Instagram and TikTok. So find us there um, for other things, maybe.